and welcome to the pewter cast this is the instant cast for game number eight falcons at the bucks it is 11 51 by my clock on thursday evening about to be friday morning uh this may be literally the most instant of the instant cast that we've ever done um seems like uh a lot recently i have uh, not actually been able to watch the game live. In fact, I was trying to do the math on it. I think of the eight games we've played so far, there's only been four of them that I've been able to watch live. I've had to go back and watch the rest on uh, Game Pass or on, um, what do we call that, uh, uh, DVR, I guess. Um, had to watch it there later. So, um, And this game in particular, I only really got to watch the last quarter, which... Um, You know, if you're only going to watch one quarter of this game, that would be the one to watch or not. Uh, I was out. uh, Some of you know for my job, I am a stand-up comedian, and we had a show tonight that I could not get out of. Um, So that's where I was the majority of the night, but I was checking in with my phone. I had some some, uh, plays. Uh, I had a couple of Twitter accounts going straight to my phone, and... uh, was kind of keeping up that way. I was very distracted. Uh, My set was not the best tonight, and that's okay. Uh, You guys don't really care about what I do there, Um, but I did manage to get home in time to see the last quarter. Uh, I was listening to Gene Deckerhoff's call uh, while driving home, so uh, fairly familiar with what happened, but I've not really gotten to see it. I've not gotten to soak it in, And um, but I'm feeling a lot like you guys. I'm feeling a whole lot like you guys. Um... And, uh, yeah, uh, here's the thing. I I think this is my big thought. Now, I I think for me, not having watched that game all the way through, not having sat through it like most of you guys, um, I'm not as pissed off. Um, Because, honestly, and I hate to say this, I really, really, really hate to say this, the game went about like I thought it was going to go. A, that's that's the game turned out about how I felt it would. Uh, we competed in the first half. It felt like we didn't do anything in the second half. By the way, that is the second game in a row where we came out. We actually did really good in the first half, and in the second half, something shifted, and the other team just went in and had their way with us. Um, obviously, I think we competed a little bit more last week. Maybe we competed exactly the same last week. It's just the Falcons didn't have 200-plus yards and penalties that they gave up to us. That's possible. But this game went about about like I thought it was going to go. It really uh, it did. I hate that. Um, I did not expect Jameis to get hurt at the end. Um, I do not, by the way, and I know a lot of you guys are out there. I tweeted. I said, oh, great, Jameis is hurt. Let's blame that one on Cutter. Because I knew some people were going to. Oh, why do we have Jameis out there? We're 20 points down. We're not going to come back. Put Mike Glennon in so he doesn't get hurt. You know what? That is dumb. All right, you keep your guys out there. You let them play. You let them get out there. And calling a two-point conversion in that instance was correct. It was the right call to make. This is football. People get hurt. And and I don't wish anyone to get hurt. I'm not wanting people to get hurt. But they're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. Uh, it, so it happens. Jameis Winston got hurt. Sounds like we had a, several injuries tonight to add to the growing list of injuries, the the pile-on of injuries. I had this conversation with Greg Allman, I think it was Greg, a little bit earlier this week, talking about how short the Buccaneers injury report is. It's only was like four players earlier this week. Yeah, until you turn around and you look at how many people we have on IR, on the PUP list, we've got a lot of people. We've got a lot of of first and second team people on that list. We have one guy who's still on the list from last year who had another setback that we've not been able to get back yet in Lewis Murphy. And oh my gosh, we could really use Lewis Murphy right about now. Hey, listen, did you know you could be listening to the pewter cast, the instant cast live right now? We're on mixler.com forward slash the pewter cast. If you are listening to this live, that means you're actually already there. But for future reference, that's where you go. Mixler.com, M-I-X-L-R, no E, L-R.com forward slash the pewter cast. And uh, for the next foreseeable future for the instant cast, we're going to get these out here 
We're going to do these as soon as we can right after the game. And I'm going to open up the phone lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. There's a handful of people in the chat room. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for jumping in here right after the game. I'll be here as late as you guys want to talk. Sometimes these instant casts only go about 20 minutes. Sometimes they go about 30, maybe 40. I'll be here as long as you guys want to talk. So if anyone wants to talk, you want to let me know how the game went. You guys watched this game more than I did. And uh, you can come call me. Now, listen, this is not Bucks Uncensored. Okay, don't come in here with an expletive-laden thing. Come in here and be mad. That's okay. You can be pissed off. That's okay. We're all adults here. That's fine. But uh, please don't make me mark the explicit label when I post this up on the podcast later. I really don't want to have to do that. And I'm not going to go in and and put beeps over all of your words. So uh, if you want to call in and actually talk about the game and and not just rail off and tell me how mad you are, but you want to talk about it, you want to tell me what you saw, what you didn't like, maybe even what you did, what was encouraging from this game. Surely there was a handful of things. Mike Evans had an amazing catch, one-handed. Um, you want to talk about the the hits to the head that Mike Evans and Jameis Winston looked like they were getting all night long, and that's just from what I was hearing on the radio and then what I saw in the last you know, 10, 15 minutes of the game. So uh, that that's clock minutes, not not real time minutes. So if you guys want to call in, the number is eight four three six three three bucks. That's eight four three six three three two eight two seven. I would love to talk with you guys about that. Uh, until then, I guess I'm just going to talk about kind of what I saw. I'm going to talk about where I am on the bucks and how I'm feeling. I am. I feel like I was prepared for this. I feel like I was prepared for it. I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, yeah, there we go. We gotta make sure the, the, the volume for the line is open in case somebody calls in. Um, I really feel like I was prepared for what was going to happen in this game because, okay, here's the reality of where Tampa Bay Buccaneers sit right now. Let's look at the overall picture. All right. I'm going to zoom out and I want to look at the overall picture. Here's what I said. Uh, we went one and three in the first quarter. We have now gone two and two in the second quarter. We won the first two. We've lost the the, the second two. That's going to put us. Uh, what's our record now? Three and or yeah, that's going to be three and six, three and five. What is that? I don't know. It's three and five. Yeah, we're only at eight games. We're so we're at three and five. This is exactly where we were last year, and the next four games for the Bucks. I'm feeling okay about, and I, here's what I said at the beginning of this quarter of the season. I said, I expect the team to go two and two. That's what I expected them to do. Uh, so like I said, I feel like I was prepared for being here at this point. I, I, I am not happy that we are at two and two. Please do not get me wrong. I'm not happy that we only went two and two. I am satisfied though. I am satisfied. I am satiated. We went two and two. We improved on the first quarter, guys. That's what happened. You you guys sit back and take a look at this. We improved in this quarter over the first quarter of the season. So regardless of of the the pain of what's going on right now, the Bucks are trending up and to the right on a on a quarterly level. And now we've got to look forward to the next quarter where where I will be satisfied with is three and one. I will not be satisfied at two and two. I will be satisfied at three and one. I said this a little bit earlier on Twitter, and some people said uh, that I had a loser mentality because of that. If I was accepting a two and two record in the second quarter, that that meant I had a loser mentality. And that's not it at all. I, I, I can appreciate your thought on that, but that's not where I'm coming with that. Where I'm coming with that is on a couple things. One, the the Bucks have improved over the first quarter of the season. Two, this is exactly where we were last quarter. And if we go three and one in the next quarter, which it's looking increasingly harder, like like we won't. Okay, and, and that's solely just based on injuries. Solely based on injuries, it, it's looking harder that we probably it will be harder for us to go three and one. Uh, it could be. I don't want to say it will be. It could be harder for us to go three and one. Um. Chris over in the chat room says it looks like it's going to be more one and three. It could be. Okay, it could be. And I will not be happy. I will be pissed off if we go one and three in the next quarter. And we could. We've got a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries in key places for people. We don't know when they're coming back. We still don't know when Doug Martin's coming back. 
we don't know when Lewis Murphy is actually going to come back with the setback that both of those two guys just had. My God, we need them back. Okay, let's take account. All right, I, you know, if you guys listened to What the Buck this week, I really hope you did, and I hope you listened to both hours. And and Derek kind of called me out on something later, having to talk about Aguayo, and I'm I might give my own thoughts towards that later because uh, I couldn't I couldn't defend or explain myself via he was on a microphone and I was in the chat room that just wasn't going to happen, and and he was talking about something else than than what I was in that specific moment. And that's okay. Go listen to what his his talk or, or what their podcast was on. Because it was kind of setting the team, it was setting us as a fan base where we need to be. And and it's about dispelling with the narratives, the false narratives over the season and, and over this team that we as a fan base need to stop talking about. We need to stop spinning those narratives. So go listen to, to What the Buck. Um, but, okay, uh, how do I explain this? Uh well, before I do that, guys, you can call into the show, 843-633-BUCKS. That's 843-633-2827. If you want to talk about this game, I would love to talk with about it. You guys saw a little bit more of it than I did. Um, guys, here, here's the deal. We're, we're at 3-5 and five right now. If we go 3-1 and one on the next quarter, that's going to put us at 6-6. Six and six. That's, what, that's going to put us at 6-6. Six and six. Okay? And what that means is that we are now back in it for December football. That means that that in the last four games, the last four games of the season are going to really matter. This is right where we were this time last year. Except now we've got more injuries. Okay, let's take a look at the team. When we started the year, and we can we can bitch, moan, and complain. We can cry about how we should have stacked more people in the offseason and gotten more free agents and all these things. Okay, guys, let's remember what we had. We had Doug Martin. Charles Sims, the best running back one-two punch in the league as it was being touted. And we had Mike James as our number three uh, running back who was looking very good, who was looking very healthy. And we had these guys that we really loved as as undrafted free agents that were up-and-coming players that we could take a little bit and develop, right? The Peyton Barber, the Russell Hansberry, remember those guys. We liked them, okay? We looked good at run, at the running back position, Okay, let's look at the wide receivers. We had Mike Evans. We had Vincent Jackson, whom we both love. Those are both elite receivers. We had Lewis Murphy coming. We we knew he was coming back, right? Now, we didn't know when, but we knew he was coming back. But Adam Humphreys was looking fantastic in the preseason. He was a great slot receiver. There was no reason to go out and get yet another wide receiver. We had a couple other guys, you know, kind of come through through those positions, uh, we had Kenny Bell that we thought was going to do well. Of course, that never really materialized. He never did as great as we, I think we had him in our head as being. Running back, or wide receiver looked position, position looked great. Running back position looked great. Let's look at the tight end. Oh my gosh, how many tight ends did we have on this team heading into this in, into this season? We had, we had uh, Luke Stocker, Brandon Myers, Cameron Brait, Austin Safarian Jenkins. We drafted Danny Vitale. There was um, uh, who's the other guy? Ch- uh, begins with a C. Um, yeah, we had that guy, and he was the guy who actually made the team over Danny Vitale. Sorry, I don't remember his name right now. We had a pretty deep tight end room. So the people around Jameis, and then by the way, we had Jameis, Mike Glennon, and Ryan Griffin. And our offensive line, and you can say what you want about our offensive line, but we ha- the core of our offensive line was back. The core, the core of that room was back, right? We were just really missing Logan Mankins. And they brought in J.R. Jer- Sweezy. He's, he's, he's been like a ghost. He's never materialized. And I, you can't blame him for that. He got injured apparently while he was working out here with the team. But then Kevin Pamphil steps in and turns out he grades out better than everybody else on the entire freaking O-line. Our offense looked solid going into this team. So what I am getting tired of hearing people bitch, moan, and complain about is the idea that Jason Light didn't go out and bring in more talent around, around Jameis. We looked good. Given the information that we had and what we were seeing at the time in the preseason, in camp, we looked good. You move over to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, there was some work there, but let's face it. I think it was it was uh, uh, Chris Fisher from the old Bucks Brief podcast tweeted this out, and I'm sorry if I'm getting the exact numbers wrong, but I think it was something. 
He said in the last three drafts under Jason Light, we've drafted, I believe it was 14 offensive players versus just five defensive players. I think that no, that number's right. I think that's what he said. But either way, it's about that kind of div- division. We've drafted way more offensive people than we have defensive people. And and really, let's look at a draft. Y- your first round pick should be a guy that's going to play for you. Your second round pick is probably going to be a guy who plays for you. Third round pick, probably going to be a guy who plays for you for a while. Fourth round pick, eh, maybe, maybe not. Fifth round, sixth round, seven. those. If you find somebody in the fourth, fifth, or sixth round, seventh round, it, you you found a gem that nobody else knew. Like Quan Quan Alexander, that is that is a rarity. We got lucky. We got lucky finding Quan in the fourth round. Okay, you, we you just don't find that kind of talent that often in 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 those rounds. So really, what you're looking at is what about three players per draft. And we drafted so heavily towards the offensive side of the ball. We've not had the defensive people through the draft to build through the draft. And we keep talking about that. You got to build through the draft, build through the draft, build through the draft. So we went out and we, we got some free agent acquisitions. We got Brent Grimes. We got Robert Ayers. We got Daryl Smith. Okay. We all knew we were thin at, at safety. We all knew that, that that was an area of concern. I, I don't think anyone has been delusioned by that particular uh, that particular position, but we bolstered a defensive line. We bolstered our, our, our linebacking core just a bit. And, and while certainly I think we went into the season knowing that we still had some work to do on the defense, it felt okay. Here's what you can't plan for as a head coach or, a a, a GM or even a, a offensive or defensive coordinator. You can't plan for the amount of injuries to key people on the team that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have had. Now, we can't use injuries as an excuse, okay? This is football. Injuries are part of the game. You can't use injuries as an excuse, right? However, we have to take into account that for the people, you know, I've talked about it. I talked about it on my show this last week, that that what the Raiders game showed us was we need more weapons around Jameis. Vincent Jackson, for for whatever reason, did not have a great year this year, and then he got hurt. Now, the thing about Vincent Jackson is when he was on the field, he still drew coverage. People still had to game plan for him because of who he is, even if he wasn't producing that great. So we still had V-Jax and Mike Evans. V-Jax goes down. Now we've got Mike Evans and a stable of all our third, fourth, fifth, and sixth string uh wide receivers. Okay, well that's a little depleted. All right, let's look at the running back. You can't you can't predict that when you have the best one two punch in the running back room in the entire league of the NFL that your number one guy is going to go out with a hamstring injury for an untold number of weeks. That your number two guy is going to go out with an injury that's going to place him on IR probably for the year. That your third string guy you're actually going to lose him in the last week of the preseason. And you're, you're going to wave him injured. And yeah, we got him back, but you know, he, he's missed so many weeks. He's not going to be ready to go and play bang, bang within. I mean, I, I don't know when we signed him. I think we signed him. For, was it this week? Was it this week we signed Mike James? He's been back a couple of days, guys. He, he's got to have time to get back into it, but he still played a bit tonight. I don't know what his, what his stat lines look like. So he's not going to be – Mike James is not going to come back in and step in as that that uh, position right away. We've got to give him a little bit of time. I think he can get there, though. So now, you remember those guys that we had kind of – we brought them in as undrafted free agents and we, we stashed them on practice squad? Yeah, that's what we're rolling with now. And those guys are great. Those guys are, are, are good, but they were still very much in developmental side – and we brought them in. Oh, by the way, we go out and get Jaquiz Rogers. Jaquiz Rogers turns out to be a stud, and then he gets injured. You can't plan for these injuries. And and I I can only imagine how demoralizing that team is. Uh, and listen, guys, you want to call in, talk to me, please feel free. 843-633-BUCKS. That's 843-633-2827. I'd love to know your thoughts on what's going on with the Bucks. I'm not saying that that injuries are an excuse for why the Bucs aren't competing. I can't say that injuries are an excuse for why the Bucs aren't winning. I'm just saying it's something that we have to take into account. 
And even still with that, in spite of all of that, the Bucks hung in there score for score with the Raiders, which is which was is one of the best road teams in the NFL this year. They're an up and coming team. They're on fire. They're 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 their record coming into the into the the game last week was five and two. They won, of course. Now they're six and two. They're leading their division. We went toe to toe with them. We took it to overtime. We played an entire fifth quarter. And four days later, five days later, whatever, we're going to go up against a hot, hot Atlanta Falcons team. And we go out for the first quarter and or for the first half. And we go toe to toe with them, and the Bucks came out in the second half. I don't know. I don't know what happens in the Bucks locker room during halftime, but if you guys notice, there there just seems to be a difference, at least in these last two weeks. I don't know what what the difference is, but there seems to be a big difference when they come out between the first half and the second half. And I'd like to. I'd I'd like to to. I'd like to hear people ask questions about that. I'd love, I'd love to, and they're not going to tell us. They're not going to tell us the inner workings of the locker room. Okay, and and that's fine. I get it. I've I've been in locker rooms before. It's sacred ground. You 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 don't really. I there's a part of there's that old football player in me like like I I'm a I'm a consumer of the media. You know I love watching those those interviews that they get with the players, and and I will continue to watch those. But there is a. The, it's the old football player in me that just understands how sacred the locker room is when you see that it's actually an open locker room. And, and you know, these guys are in there walking around butt naked, trying to come out of the shower, just trying to get dressed. You know, they're still sore. And they got people running around with cameras and microphones and, and lights on their phone and taking notes. And, and I mean, come on, guys. That's you, you got to. I mean, sometimes you just need time to to think about the game. Maybe you got to say some stuff to the other guys around the locker room. And they're going to have open locker. So I don't know. I'm going to watch those interviews. I like watching those interviews. At the same time, there's a part of me that I kind of hate that they do that. I I really do. And for the guys that you know make their money and earn their living off of covering the Bucks, they love it because that you know I guess they feel like that gives them the rawest and realest feelings and emotions uh, for what's going on. So Bucks fans, I don't know. Uh, you know, I I still got to go back and watch this game. I'm going to go back and watch it from the beginning, and maybe by the time I get to that, maybe I should redo the instant cast after I get get to that spot where I go back and watch it. And uh, you know, as soon as it comes out, I'll watch the all twenty two because there's there's a couple of plays that I can remember hearing the call on, from Gene Deckerhoff uh, that I was listening to on the radio that I said I want to go back and I want to I want to break down that play. I've got a couple of players that I want to key in on this particular game. I don't want to break down their play. Uh, I am, I am not a film guy. All right. I, when I played ball, we didn't, I played offensive line. We didn't go down and break down film. That's not something we did where, where I played. We just went out, we got ready and we knocked heads. We busted heads. So, uh, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of meandering into this breaking down film and there's other guys, guys, listen, there are other people that are way better at it than I am. Go 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 follow uh, Stephen Che on Twitter. He he breaks down game film better than just about anybody else I see. Bucks Brief Podcast. It was it was one of the best things that that about that particular show. And I'm not trying to be Bucks Brief Podcast. That's just something that Chris is great at is breaking down game film. He knows what he's looking for when he's watching that. Um, you know, I I wish some of these other guys would because here's what I know, and I can tell you this: you can look at stat lines. Stat lines will lie to you. You can you can look at stat lines, you can pick out stat lines, and you can make them say whatever you want them to say. Whatever narrative you're trying to sell, you can you can find a stat that's gonna support that. And stat lines don't actually tell you the whole story. Stat lines just give you a very blah kind of thing. You've got to look at the whole picture of what's actually going on. So uh so I'm gonna be trying that out this week. But Bucks fans, here's my instant cast take for you. Let's breathe. Be mad. I, as somebody in the in the chat room I saw just a minute ago said, uh, "I'm not. I'm not pissed. I'm defeated." And does that feel like where we are, maybe as a fan base, Bucks fans? I don't know. Call in and tell me about it. Eight four three six three three Bucks. That's eight four three six three three. 
two eight two seven. Are you pissed off or are you defeated? Because I get it. We're now at the halfway point of our season. We're now at the and we we get like this little miniature bye week, like a half of a bye week, where we have ten days. The team has ten days to get healthy, and and come back, and start this again, and get on the road. Is the team defeated? Maybe. Do they feel defeated? Uh, I don't know. Are you as fans defeated? I would tell you, don't be. Don't be. Listen, guys, you know, there there's a question that I got to talk through with some people earlier this week about what does it mean to support the team? And here's what I think supporting the team means. When you support the team, you you it's beyond just watching the game and buying the gear and wearing the jerseys and wearing the hats. I mean, that's a part of it. Okay, you want to support the team. Be proud about it. You're going to watch the games. But to support the team is to be behind them no matter what. Not supporting the team. Let me tell you what that looks like. That looks like running them down. Now, I... You know, and there are places where you can go and you can just say, these guys suck. These guys suck. These guys suck. There's there's a hashtag I saw going around on Twitter. I actually had to turn off notifications to it and stop seeing it because I don't want to see this crap in my timeline. It was like hashtag so effing bucks. That's not supporting the team. You cannot call yourself a fan of this team if you're going to run down this team. Go be a fan of some other team and run them down. Don't run down my bucks. Especially when they're down. Don't come in here and kick them when they're down. Guys, listen. That's not supporting the Supporting the bucks is I'm going to be behind them no matter what. Win, lose, compete, not compete. They draft my player. They don't draft my player. They draft a kicker in the second round and they trade it up to go get him. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I'm still behind them. That's why hashtag I'm with 19. I didn't even see Aguayo tonight. Of course, I, I didn't come in until the very end, to, to, to the fourth quarter. But I didn't see him. I, how did he do? I don't think he had a field goal chance, just given the, the way the score was. Did he miss one? I don't know. Was Aguayo perfect tonight? That'd be kind of cool. I hope he was. I hope he was. He got, he got uh, you know, two extra points, and that's it. Supporting the team means you're with them no matter what. Supporting the team means you don't buy into and you don't believe the false narratives that are going on out there. That you sit there and you say, Doug Martin is is sitting because it's not a contract year. He got he got money, and now he's he's just not doing his thing. By the way, you could say the same thing at DeMar Dotson, right? Oh, he just got his big contract, so now he's not going to play. And DeMar Dotson is out there knocking helmets each and every single play. You sit there and say, Mike Evans is up for uh, is due for a contract extension. That's why he's doing so great. Or how about Mike Evans has just finally matured and he's coming into his own here in his third year? You know who's not in their third year yet? Jameis Winston. Still figuring out. You know who's not in their third year yet? Donovan Smith. We need a new left tackle. Donovan Smith sucks. Jameis Winston's one of the most hit QBs in the league. You could probably make a really good case for why we need a new left tackle. I'm I'm going to stick with Donaldson. Now they bring in somebody else, they move some people around. I'm probably, you know, I'm I'm going to support the Bucks. That's what being support. That's what supporting the team means. Now I may disagree with a move that they make. I may I may disagree with a move that they don't make. I may have thought that they should have gone and 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 collected another wide receiver when Vincent Jackson went down. By the way, I don't. Because I was looking at who was available out there and what it would cost for us to get them versus what we would get in return. And you know what I saw? Nothing. I didn't see anyone out there. So you guys can can cry about how much we didn't go get Torrey Smith or how much we didn't go get the other guy. But they weren't, ava- they weren't available for the right price. It would have been too much. Would have been too much. So do we need to look at drafting an elite wide receiver, maybe with our first pick, maybe second pick this year? Yeah, probably. 
probably somebody to match up with with Mike Evans. But I have a question for you. Understanding that that of the draft picks we get this year, you're probably really only going to get three good ones. Probably. Could be less. Could be more. So with those three, not the seven or even the eight, maybe if you trade and get another one. With those three, what do you do? Do you put people around Jameis? Do you give Jameis weapons or do you bring in somebody else to protect Jameis? Or do you do something to help bolster this defense that I think I saw a stat that, that uh, first of all, the NFC South is apparently the worst division in the league at allowing points. So do we draft defensively? Because really, you were only looking at the three. And we can go sign some players in the offseason. We can f- find some, some, some free agents. Sure, if they're available. If they agree to come here. You know, I don't know. I don't know. If, if I'm a player with another team and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers call me and you want me to go play there, but uh, another team that has a better tradition is also calling and, and the money is about the same, I'm probably going to go with a place that has more of a tradition of winning right now if I'm in the league because I want to win. It'd be a hard sell to get me to come down here. Now, they could try to overpay for people. But how much would we, you know, you'd sit there and, and you just set yourself up. He's making $58 million to catch a ball and he can't catch the ball. You're just going to set yourself up for that, right? What do you guys think? There's a question if you want to call in and talk to me. What should we do with our draft picks this coming year? We're at the halfway point of the season, okay? What should we do? Call me, 843-633-BUCKS, 843-633-27, nope, 2827. I'd love to talk to you. I probably got about five or ten minutes left here, unless somebody calls in. Maybe less. I don't know. Yeah. Support the team, guys. Support the team. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at Twitter. Let's see what's going on out there. Let's see how people are feeling About the Bucks. Got some people talking about the hockey team. <laughs> a lot of people posting. Uh, a lot of people posting clips from the game. Apparently, Jameis is adamant that his knee is fine, and even danced for reporters when he left the interview room. Okay, let's talk about that. Jameis Winston getting hurt. What if Jameis gets hurt? You know, Mike Glennon, I got to tell you, I thought he didn't look too bad going out there. He didn't look too bad. Now, I get it. It's, it, you know, it's what we call garbage time, right? And and I didn't I didn't check to see who the who the the players were that the Falcons had on the field. Was it their second or even third team defensive units? I I don't know who he was going against, but I thought Mike Mike Glennon looked pretty pretty decent you know there's a reason that we're so hard up to keep Mike Glennon on this team as a backup is should something happen that takes Jameis out of the game that he's good to go and so you know I'm not fine with Jameis being hurt I want Jameis in the game I'd rather have Jameis in the game but if he is hurt I don't want him to go out there and and tell us that his knee is fine and even dance if it's really not fine you know I'm okay with the player getting hurt I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not freaking out. Oh, Jameis is hurt. And now our s- next three seasons are over. Cause it seems like some of you guys are saying, Oh, listen, first of all, we've got Mike Glennon. Now Mike Glennon's not Jameis Winston, but let's be honest. The last couple games, Jameis Winston hasn't looked great. Who knows? Maybe going back and looking at the table show a different story. Jameis Winston. Somebody on Twitter says, I wish I knew how the Bucks could be fixed. Until they figure it out, we'll still be there in all misery. You know, that's supporting the team. That is supporting the team. That is uh, Robert. Robert on Twitter says, I wish I knew how it could be fixed, but until they do, I'm still going to be there in all my misery. It's a Bucks life. Hashtag. That's great. That is what it means to support the team. We're going to be there in good and in bad. 
in good and in bad. I got somebody who's posted a uh, a wanted poster with Mike Smith in quotation mark defensive coordinator reward one Pro Bowl defensive tackle. Uh, somebody's posted his picture. It's like a wanted picture, and it says, "Fire this clown! Not going to another home game." God, on Twitter says that. Oh my gosh. Okay, do you guys not understand? Do people not understand? That if you continue to fire the coach, if you continue to fire the coordinator, you get no consistency on the team. And when you have no consistency, you can't build a program. And Mike Smith, we've already covered, I already covered just not 20 minutes ago, the fact that the Bucks have not been drafting defensive players in the last bunch of drafts. It's been a bunch of of free agent guys that have that have washed out of their teams for one reason or another. Now maybe it was a money issue, maybe it was a roster spot, maybe it was an injury that forced them out, out open and then they got healthy and now they're back. So it doesn't mean they're bad players that we've brought in. It doesn't mean that they were washed up players, but the the fact is is they're 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 people who have left their other team for one reason or another. They they went free agent. We've signed in a handful of those guys. Now we got Quan, we got Vernon. That's really been about it. Noah Spence. We could we could say we got Noah Spence. And then you add in Levante, you add in Gerald McCoy, who I still think is the best player on this team. Sorry, Jameis. Sorry, Mike Evans. I think Gerald McCoy is still the best player on this team. And no, before you guys ask, I've not gone back. I don't have the I can't point you to specific film to back that up, but I know people who can. I know people who can. And they may come down to a different conclusion than I do on that, but I know they can't. And I'm going to start watching film because I want to try to do it myself. We can't go in and fire our coaches every time we turn around. Every time we get into a, you know a, a, a bit of a slide, we've got to let them keep going. They have to build the program. And it takes more than eight games. It takes more than eight games with a rash of injuries and... And a set of players that uh, are kind of, you know, you you got a bunch of young rookies and then you got two like seasoned vets and you got a couple of free agents that come in and they may be good. They may not be. Who knows? Or maybe they're mediocre. We can't keep firing our coaches, people. Can't do it. Can't do it. You got to ride it out. One guy says, defense got trashed as usual. Jameis Winston, like the commentator said, showed flashes but missed open throws as well. Well, okay. Okay. Someone is lamenting, says, God dang it. If we aren't hurt enough, potentially lost Evans and Winston. F, man. This person says. That would hurt. Losing Evans and Winston would hurt. And 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 this particular person points out what I was saying. We're hurt. Guys, we're a hurt team. You, you can't use it as an excuse, but you have to take it in as a factor when you're thinking about what's going on with the team right now. <sighs> Guys, I think that's the instant cast. I think that's going to get us for this week. I think that's going to get it. Final call, anyone who wants to call in, 843-633-2827. That's 843-633-BUCKS. And, uh, hey, listen, if you're listening to this uh, outside of the live version of this, you can actually still call that number and leave a voicemail. I would love to listen to it. And keep in mind, if you do leave that, I may just use it come the main show. Might not, but I might. I really might. I've done it before. I've done it before. Listen, Bucks fans, support your team. Actually support the team. You're behind them, win or lose. Go out and be mad. Get pissed off. Be passionate. That's fine. Don't run the team down. That's not fine. Don't go out and badmouth the team. That's not fine. 
You'll go out there and you'll say it on Twitter, but you're not going to say it to their faces. That makes you a coward. Yes, I'm going to say it again. That makes you a coward. Guys, be on the lookout for the main show. Main show is coming up. Uh, I don't know if we'll do it at a regular time next week. Usually we record on Tuesday nights. Uh, I might do it a little bit early. I don't know. We got the weekend coming up. We'll find out. Just be on the lookout for it. It's coming. I promise you it is. Got a great guest coming in for the main show this week. Uh, He should be a whole lot of fun. And um, I'll wait to tell you who that is. uh, Because I want it to be a surprise. Um, So, guys, you can do that. Uh, Email me at thepewtercast at gmail.com. Find me on Twitter at thepewtercast or on facebook.com forward slash thepewtercast. Would love to talk to you there. And until the main show, until next time, guys. Go Bucks.